everybody, my name is The Silent Sheepdog, and welcome to the Dose of Darkness devlog number zero. In this video, I'll be showcasing the character sprite sheets, beginning uh, of the tile set graphics, what the original game was going to look like, and a demo of it, old Dose of Darkness assets, uh, like original designs and stuff like that, and the map, and what I would like to do with the environment. So here we have the very first iteration of The Wanderer. The Wanderer currently does not have a name, but they are the protagonist of this story. And as you can see, I started off with kind of like this low hip cargo short with um, like a bodysuit and a uh, cover for their face, which there's a reason for that canonically, like there's a story reason for the covers and being so covered up. Um, which uh, you guys will figure out kind of like as time goes by, either as the game launches or I don't know, maybe I'll let it slip in a devlog eventually. But as you can see, I took a lot of inspiration from Fear and Hunger 1 and um, the walk cycle and the size and the coloring and everything. So I had this idea for this character with this really like high contrast coat and honestly, in my untrained eye, it looked pretty good, but we're going to get into why I changed it later. But this is the first iteration of the uh, Wanderer. So this is the second iteration of the Wanderer. Uh, I wanted to play around with bigger sizes because I wanted to put more details on the characters. And it took a couple months worth of trying new things and trying to figure out how I wanted to size everything up. And then over time, I kind of realized I didn't really like how bulky she looked. And so I went a little bit bigger of a sprite sheet, but a smaller uh, display of the character, which I'll show right here. So this is the, this was going to be the final version of the Wanderer um, without her coat. For most of the game, she is going to have a coat on, but I wanted to have a sprite sheet of her without one. But this one I wanted to use for testing because I could actually see how she looked and how she walked. This is a different sprite sheet um, and walk cycle that I took from someone else who made it readily available. They put their uh, sprite sheets out on like a Google Drive and were like, here, why don't you try? And so <laughs> I took it and I made something out of it. But I'm not a huge fan of the walk cycle. It didn't look bad, but it just wasn't really what I was going for. But you can see kind of the idea that I was going for with the bodysuit and the pants. Um, also the top down kind of almost like three fourths top down view. It didn't really look good with my style. I'm not skilled enough in perspective to really make that look good. And it made her torso look extremely long and her legs look extremely short, especially with the design of her pants. And it just really wasn't jiving with me. So I decided to go back to square one and uh, resize the entire game to more of what Miro had sized everything to. And I started building off of his assets and I used them as foundations and building blocks. So this is the current uh, iteration of the protagonist of the Wanderer. I changed a lot of colors. Uh, as a friend who also works in RPG Maker stated, um, the colors didn't really fit together. And so I'm trying to stick with a palette, which is like this kind of burgundy or like, I guess mahogany red and blacks and um, really muted colors. And I think this looks a hundred times better. I do think she could use a little bit more characterization, but as far as just fitting into the world and it being functional um, and just, you know, holding the place for it right now, I think it looks perfectly fine. She looks like she fits into the world a lot more. I took her hood off and made her cover up um, more like the hood itself as a part of the bodysuit rather than being um, a separate scarf wrapped around her. Um, I gave her much simpler boots, much simpler pants, more like a leather jacket, kind of like a leather bomber jacket. Um, the world is not necessarily frozen cold, but it's pretty chilly when the game takes place, so I wanted her to be fully covered up. Um, but this is essentially what I'm going with right now, and this is going to be fully painted. This is all just kind of like flats and playing around with shape language and you know, figuring out sprite sheets and seeing what works and figuring out colors and the like. So, but I really like this one and I'm going to expand upon this. Here is one I'm super excited for. This one is also not finalized. This was the first uh, finished iteration of Corvo's sprite. Um, 
it was cool at first, but it's just not what I'm looking for. I also need, like, I redesigned his arm, I redesigned his hair, um, I redesigned everything about Corvo. And also, so the funny thing about Corvo is that I have this really interesting idea where he's got this kind of cyber skin going on because he is a cyborg, but, uh, this is his like this black and red here is essentially his skin um it's a very gruesome story which i don't want to spoil anything i want it all to be you know a final playthrough i want you guys to discover corvo and his story in the game itself so i won't be talking at all about corvo's story but as far as his design uh and first impressions the black and red is his skin save for the skin on his face and uh now that I kind of think about it, I'm like, that'd be kind of weird because Corvo does still have all the working parts of a human um, on the inside and out. His skin is just different. So uh, I'm probably gonna have to give this good old boy some pants and shoes at, at the very least. But um, yeah, like a, a, upon first iteration though, I do still, I love this design. I just think it wouldn't really make sense in the lore for um, him to essentially be walking around naked. Um, so yeah, but I really enjoy Corvo. He is my favorite character in the entire series. Like, I give him the most love. He's the poster boy. He is the cool one with the tragic backstory and everything. But yeah, I just have a huge, uh, spot in my heart for Corvo. And Corvo was, um, Honestly, I designed Corvo for Dose of Darkness before the protagonist even came along. So yeah, I really love this boy and he is my favorite character. All right, so let's move into the fun stuff. So while I was playing around and learning how to co like quote unquote code the game, um, because there is no real coding or scripting in this game, it's mostly just uh, attaching A to B to C in a series of events that the RPG maker has already coded into it or plugins that you can put in, y you get the idea. So this guy though, I made a basic sprite sheet for this goopy little monster. He was inspired by the monster from Smile. Um, Cause I thought that like, triple jaw, huge hanging open face, kind of like the amnesia monsters almost now that I think about it. But the, the monster from Smile was the main um, inspiration for this monster. He's not an official monster. He's just a tester monster. But I'll tell you what, like he's a creepy looking little dude. And when he's walking around the map, it it looks freaky. Like it, he's very creepy. Um, but this is the first monster test that I've ever done. Battles do work as far as triggering. They just don't work as far as um, like actually performing because I need to design some weapons and the weapons are bonked for some reason in my test file. So yeah, I, I won't be able to showcase that, but hopefully I'll be able to showcase that later. Here is a quick little uh, time lapse that I filmed in CSP for the shed that you guys will be seeing um, designing. I tried to design it as its own map. I was playing around with that. That did not work. Um, so it, it came out like a tile set, which is whatever, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm still learning. This is the map that um, I'm planning out so that I can get an idea of how I want the world's layout to look and how I want the world to open up and expand. Um, this game does take place in America. And so if you are not from America, this map might look a little weird. If you are from America, this map still might look a little weird because um, it's kind of hard for me to put on paper what I see in my head. But there's like a really big woods area. Um, you start off on a farm and then there's like the main town. And then there's like a, you know, a small American highway that leads on to the interstate, which is this big gray um thing here you know I just kept it really simple and as you can see I don't know how American interstates work even though I've driven on them for almost all my life but um yeah I I was having trouble trying to figure out how I wanted uh the main town that the game takes place in to connect to the major city across the interstate but um yeah I I am not a city planner nor do I know how to build roads. So it's, it's been fixed. Um, this is so incorrect, but it's been fixed. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the map. So I don't want to like, I'm keeping the map very vague because I know what I want it to look like, but I don't want to spoil any, anything for you guys in these devlogs. So. All right, now we're gonna jump into the fun stuff. Um, this is the original Dose of Darkness cover. Like I said, poster boy Corvo on there. He's actually my phone background. I love him. Um, this is his old iteration. It was going to be his final, but then I noticed a couple of uh, details that I didn't see before. As I grow as an artist and as I train my eye, 
Um, his new arm is super cool. I will feature some of the sketches of the characters kind of as we go on because I don't want to spoil any characters too early. This is a screenshot of the game itself running. Um, as you can see, I was playing around with maybe like a basement level and it looked like crap. Um, you can see how much I was trying to scale up the characters. Uh, also didn't look too good. I was having a lot of trouble with trying to figure out how everything was going to fit in to everything. Um, this is another shot of the game, and um, you can see the heights and different varying art styles between um, all three characters and kind of what I was shooting for, and a little dresser in the background and a rug trying to figure out how to tile set a room uh, in one go rather than having to build one out, but that did not work. Um, the only early character concept art I'm going to be showing here is Corvo because Corvo, like I said, is the only one who I want to talk about right now, uh, mostly just because he is the poster boy, so people have seen this character already before, but I don't want to spoil any other characters and I will not be spoiling any of Corvo's story. But, so the fun thing about Corvo though that I can tell you guys, his name was originally going to be Ven. I don't know why, he looked like a Ven to me and then I was like, I don't know, that name doesn't fit him right. Like something, I don't know, I just don't like the way it, I don't like the way it sounds on him. I don't like, it doesn't seem like him. And he was going to be like in this red cloak uh, with red eyes and exposed heart. He was going to be more of a wolf character, which we'll, I'll get into that as well, but like a more wolf associated character um, and have full cyber skin and metallic jaw all the way up to his nose. Um, and he was gonna be this like traveler who like carries this big backpack who you just come across, you'll see in the uh, demo. But I, and I, I drew this picture of him for, you know, like um, the game to like script out a scene that I wanted to do. Um, and then Corvo turned into Corvo and then he, I did these sprites like this where I worked, you can see I worked out his design a little bit, his insignia changed on his uh, cloak. Um, his arm changed a lot more too. This is like a, probably the second design I think that I did with his arm. You can see that I whitened his eyes rather than reddened them. I changed the shape of his cloak and his hood and I changed the color to more of a like a dark red or black. And then we have the final iteration of Corvo uh, before his fixed version. This, like I said, this was going to be the official where he is all black. Um, his arm got totally revamped, which this is like a super cool, it reminds me of like Full Metal Alchemist, but, um, I actually redid his arm again. Um, it's not finished, but it's worked on. It was more so to help me find the anatomy and how to do cybernetics. Um, the exposed heart is gone. Uh, I feel like it just really didn't make sense. It looked cool, it looked edgy, but it wasn't really what I was going for. And... You know his face did change now granted this is like a super simplified version because you wouldn't you weren't going to be able to see the details very well um but his hair changed uh his eyes changed his mouth changed, like everything about corvo has essentially changed um so do not expect this to be the final version of corvo but just as a fun little feature this is the beginning stages of corvo here is a uh character like um what do you call it <laughs> like a character profile picture or whatever um, for when they speak or uh, like the menu I think and as you can see his markings are not there um, I forgot to put them on uh, but this was more so just a test anyway I actually rendered him fully painted instead of line work um, he looks really cool I'm not gonna lie I actually really like this and you can like just barely see his eye through his hood there you can see how I was working with the metal jaw and his hair was more silky and flowy in this one all the, the the designs and the damage and the blood on his metallic arm and his hood and everything like I just I love the way he looks but unfortunately that's not going to be the final. Um, also in the original visual novel version you were going to be able to pick your sex because I would have been able to do a lot easier for you to pick your sex like I found a way to give your character um, and assigned sex, but um, RPG Maker, that's gonna be a little bit harder and the story has changed a lot as far as who the protagonist is and how they integrate into the world. And so you no longer will be able to change your sex. Um, you will be an assigned female. Um, that's just how it's gonna be. Maybe in a later game or in a different story or a different kind of game, I'll do um, a game where you can pick your gender or sex, but like I just don't have that capability right now and it's just not exactly what I wanna do with this project. 
I also have some of the soundtrack done, but I really don't want to share any of that right now just because um, I still have a lot to do and um, I just, I really, really, really want to be proud of my music because I think the music is one of the most important things in the game and I just really don't want it to get out there and stolen. Like, I don't want the idea to get, it's nothing to write home about, yeah, you know, obviously because I'm not a musician or a composer or what have you, but like, you know, I just, it's mine and I don't want it to be stolen or have the idea of it stolen if someone can finish a project before me, which they likely could. So that's why I'm not going to be showcasing any of the music until like way, 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 way later on. All right. So, I'm going to hit the play button and show you guys what I got. This is a lot easier to code than, um, what is it? The RPG Maker, by the way. So this is the intro. The intro is going to change as well, because I started my own company. Baba, Doors of Darkness. <laughs> I love this so much. I love the intro. Uh, instead of an independent production by the Silent Sheepdog, it's going to be under my company. Um, which I'm not going to say the name of yet for privacy reasons, <laughs> but, uh, I did start my own company because I had to for other reasons, but yes, so it will be published under a business. Um, as you can tell, I have, like, this cool little, this was gonna, like, the engine's not capable of it, but it was gonna, like, blow out when you hit release the darkness. <sighs> like, it was gonna be so cool, but I couldn't integrate it. And you're going to hear a song I created called Red Winter. This is not it, um, but, but there's a song that I created called Red Winter that you would have heard uh, playing through. Actually, this one was the Ever Pensive Mind. Um, I, I don't think you can really hear it because the music was supposed to be really subtle, but here's the story, um, which like I said, this is definitely going to change. But at the spark of existence, six gods convened and created the known universe. The goddess of life, the goddess of love, the god of death, the god duo of fertility, the god of nature, the god of the cosmos. Since the birth of human history, people worshipped the gods and goddesses alike. However, through time, the hand of the gods became less apparent and faith grew weak. Humans have always- oh, humans though have always- I wrote this. <laughs> humans though have always been the cause of their own downfall in centuries past. Oh, I forget that the scroll feature is a uh, tip of but I couldn't read it anyway. I-, I put too much text in that box anyway, but as time progressed, people began to worship technology, science, money. The pursuit of happiness became a unifying global ideal, and for the first time in all known history, they finally succeeded. The year 2050 fell upon them. When the clock rang upon the dawn of this new age, the human race celebrated its accomplishments. The world had finally known true peace. World hunger had been a distant memory. Peace treaties amongst the nations had been firmly locked into place, and the world's greatest scientific minds had come together to create a new future for humanity. Biologists, computer engineers, chemists, and renowned doctors, I don't know if I spelled that right, collaborated to crown humanity with the final endeavor, to bring eternal life to the human condition. With the earth stable, global warming and recession, and peace among all people, they were willing to go on living once again. People were willing to work towards the future with renewed hope and love for their neighbors. While they danced and cheered at the work of their hands, the gods looked down upon them in disgust. The world that the god hand had spent hundreds of thousands of years designing thread by thread, piece by piece, uh, had been violated or something like that. New false idols had taken the place on the altar. The goddess of love was heartbroken, and the people attributed their success in love and peace for each other to their own abilities. The goddess of life, who had personally created humans, was also distraught, as the babies born from these days were no longer brought to her for blessing, stealing away her glory and her future children. The god of fertility, who loved the goddess of life, in turn took their hand away from the human womb. The god of nature was enraged over the corruption of his grand design, animals and plants alike being used for testing and to further humanity's selfish progress with no respect for the life around them. The most powerful god and head of the god hand, the god of the cosmos, who had created the stars around them, shook his head in disgrace. The god of death counseled with him and motioned to his fellow god hand, stating how long they had suffered and that they could no longer ha and that they no longer had a hand or purpose in their own creation, that their efforts had long been abandoned, and that he, even he, the unescapable god, had somehow been thwarted as well. Death was always the unescapable hand that had kept life's creation in check, in balance. 
like I said, I can't read the rest. Actually, I can read the log. And, uh, but with the discovery of cybernetics and artificial life, he too had been disgraced. The god of the cosmos nodded in agreement and decided enough was enough, and that if humanity saw it so fit to be their own gods, then to let them have their desires. Humanity, after its lifetimes of work, with all its... <laughs> culmination had one singular year to enjoy the fruits of their labor. I do not remember writing this much text into these boxes. <laughs> On the winter solstice of 2051, the old gods departed, leaving their creations behind, with a void in the realm and no one to orchestrate the dealings of this universe. New gods stepped in. New gods fed and something something. Uh, so I'm gonna skip through the gods so you don't see them. Uh, cause those are kind of like spoilers. Um, it it's not really too much to the story for you guys to know the the gods, the pre-gods. Uh, the post-gods are a little bit more integral to the story, so I'm going to skip over that. Um, but essentially, the god of darkness raised his hand and said, Let the age of darkness begin. And this is where our story begins. You, a vile human who bears witness to the wake of the age of darkness. Da 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 da! And then, like, it... <laughs> like, changes... What sex are you, scum? And you get to choose male or female. So I'm just gonna go female. Um, so it says like, what are you called, scum? And then you would just say, uh, you were gonna be able to put in your name. So name, disgusting human, name. This world will make short work of you. Welcome to hell. And then, ba-ba! And then you are in the world, and this is where the game starts, and this was going to be the original town. As you can tell, this is, probably tell, this is uh, AI generated. I just used a cheap little AI image art generator to kind of get a visual on it, because it would have taken me way, way, way too long to draw all this stuff out and sketch it out by hand. So I just used a quick little AI thing. Um, you come upon a small abandoned settlement, and I'm going to take you guys through the storyline that I already had scripted through this. Um very much different. Like I said, all this is pretty much null and void. This is more so for novelty and to have a laugh at and um, see where my original vision was going and how it's developing. Uh, the wind is howling, blowing painfully against your eardrums, even through your hood. The dark sun is beginning to set. It must be later than you initially thought. Traveling in the darkness is generally a bad idea, even before the event happened. You could contain, you could continue towards your destination or you could rest up and set up camp for the night. So the idea was that you were going to she seek shelter you decide to seek shelter for the night. Probably the smartest decision. The town is sparse with buildings. Choose wisely. It really has no effect. It's just, it was more like a story effect than, like, it's not, it wasn't like life, life or death. Um, just to the left, there's an old gun shop. To the right, an old rundown home. And just ahead, there's a silent subway. There is no subway <laughs> in this small town. But um, I was just, like, playing around with options because I could always just go back in and edit it. But uh, old house. You decided to camp out tonight in the abandoned home. If anyone passed through, they'll likely be less inclined to, vis to visit such an old abode. It might be the safest option. So you would go into the house. It's way smaller inside than it looks from the outside. There's an old couch sitting against the wall, and an old wooden table in the kitchen next to it. The couch is against the wall, so your rear is covered. Some of the windows are busted, and you can hear the wind howling through them. Blowing the old rags of curtains. There's no curtains here, as you can see. It might be a bit chilly but at least you've got ventilation for a fire. You decide to break down the old table into scrap wood and set that next to the couch. Gathering dirt and sand from the outside, you make a neat little pit to place your wood in so the fire won't spread to the surrounding floor. It's not the safest forestry-approved setup, but it's all you've got for now. You're, you take out your campfire kit and spark a fire. The warmth and light of the flame are welcoming and soothing. This may be one of the safest places you've stayed at since you began your trek placeholder background because I didn't have one. The sun is finally set. The light of the fire dances against your face and the four walls around you. The howl of the wind has died to a low drone but never ceasing. Now would be the best time to sleep if you were to. And there was supposed to be an option here? Oh, I guess that didn't get- oh, dang! I guess that didn't get coded into this one because I had to start over a few times because I was learning how to, how to code ty Tyranno Builder. But, uh, I guess it, I guess it didn't work. <laughs> so, but you are going to run into Vin, aka Corvo, now here. So, um, there's no log, there's no screen configuration menu, like, all this is broken, none of it works. Um, so yeah, that was originally what Dose of Darkness was going to be. It was going to be a visual novel. Now let's move into what the game actually is, and I'll show you guys my progress.
All right, so here we are in RPG Maker MZ. Here is the farmstead that you start off on. It's extremely barren right now. I have a bunch of more assets to import to it, but here's like the baseline of it. I uh, kind of threw the buildings around. Everything's a little bit different. As you can see here, I do have some of Miro's tiles. Um, I took the baseline for his buildings just to get like the shape and the perspective of it and the size. So I know where to put my characters down. Um, here is the shed on the inside that the uh, time lapse shows. Here's like an old deer carcass and stuff like that. This is all going to be used in the game. Um, I do have a few of his assets that I kind of like imported my own textures over like some of the floors, some of the walls, um, so I could kind of see how it would look. This is all photo bashed, by the way, like these textures. This is hand drawn. This is photo bashed. Uh, this is hand drawn. This is photo bashed, photo bashed, photo bashed. Um, fridge is hand drawn. Stove is photo bashed. This is kind of a little bit of everything, like the countertops and the sink are photo bashed. This is um, the the cabinets here are hand drawn. This is photo bashed over his textures. I'm not stealing his textures for anybody who wants to say that. I'm not stealing his textures. I'm not stealing his work. I'm just using it as a baseline, like a building block, kind of like painting Legos and turning them into your own thing. But um, there's going to be a lot of original assets. I'm not stealing anything from Miro. It's Everything, like, all the story is original from myself. I didn't take anything from his story. Like, we might have a lot of similarities, but the only similarities that I noticed were things that I integrated into the game before I even knew they were in Fear and Hunger 1. So, like, I started making this game when Fear and Hunger 1 was still in the process of being played by me. Um, and we just have similarly working minds as far as story. So... There's going to be a lot of similar elements, but it was not for um, copying of artistic integrity. It was more so just great minds think alike. So, um, but as far as the tile sets, I don't think there's anything wrong with going in and just grabbing a couple images to teach yourself how to do it. And that's all I'm doing. Um, all this completely original based off of what I saw, like how Miro made rooms. And so I went in and made my own room. Um... All the tile sets, as you can see, I still have like his dresser drawer and, um, you know, his wardrobe and uh, kind of like the formatting of his window. But honestly, that's the only thing left from Miro that I was inspired to use. Um, and like I said, I'm going to turn these all into my own original assets. They're more so just like the foundations and guidelines for me to follow so I can understand how to make the game work and look proper. Um, so... Essentially, you start off, I don't think these are all coded together because this is a test subject, as you can see up here, but I'm going to boot the game up real quick. There's no original music imported into this one yet. So here you've got our two characters on a diagonal movement system. Here's Corvo behind me because I wanted to see how his sprite looked. Um, you can't uh, see I've still got all the original sounds and everything, but I've got like some barrels here, the deer. None of this is... Um, zoned by the way so you could just kind of walk over everything right now um here's a well also one of Miro's assets that I'm gonna build on top of like I'm gonna build up the framing for like the rest of the well too if I can make that look good um and then there's here uh I did have the monster in here he was just kind of chilling and waiting in here but then I rebuilt the house um with new assets so yeah but you know like here's the old bed there's a little bit of visual storytelling that uh you'll be able to see when the game is done um table is like all red because I do that for high contrast so that I can see like what I'm actually looking at um because the game is going to have sort of like a filter over it um so while it's in development right now, I need to be able to see all the imperfections so I can catch everything. So there are going to be some things that are like really high contrast or stick out. Um, you can tell this like photo bashed stove is just kind of chilling here. Like I said, it's just an imported asset. It's a placeholder so I can get an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, this is one of Miro's countertops that I still haven't finished like painting over. And the fridge um, definitely does not look as gross as it should. I really need to go back in and paint that. You cannot exit the house, <laughs> like I said. Um, not everything is coded together, but we're gonna start back up here um, because you can you can enter the field and you saw the field, but I'll try to show you guys just the field in gameplay. Um, but yeah, that's the shed in the house. These are the two beginning buildings. You cannot pass through this for some reason, even though I said you could. Um, but this is kind of like a cornfield. Originally, it was going to be a grass field, but I could not figure out how to get those 
assets to work together in the in the engine oh my god like they would not portray right um you can tell that the <laughs> um pathway is really janky um i need to figure out how to make those tiles work together but yeah they are like really weird also like what the heck there is something there is something blocking me right here that I can't get past. That is extremely odd. But, uh, yeah. So, that's pretty much all I've got to show you guys for today. Um, so, yeah. We will move into the outro now. Thank you to my backers who have put their finances and faith in me and believe in this project so much that they donated their hard-earned money. I obviously want to do everything 110%, and unfortunately, it's just been mostly learning up until now, but I'm starting to get the hang of it, and I have friends who have given input and advice that has helped tremendously. I've also found a workflow that should speed up production a bit since I will be producing the visual assets first because that's what I'm good at, and then assigning them code. So I'll be able to visualize and see everything as it comes along and assign events and the like to what I have um, and the coding will come with like YouTube tutorials and um, as I go and I can play around with things and see what I really want to integrate into this game feature wise and event wise um, the longest thing to make is tile sets because you have to plan the environments and how your characters will interact with it trying to tell stories in the world and not just build it and all that in mind on top of just figuring out how to make them look correct ate up a lot of time but i believe it's 100 percent worth it and you have to start somewhere like you're never gonna get anywhere if you don't make mistakes and learn right and that takes time and like i said before the story is not all there yet so whatever you see or hear currently in the original visual novel is pretty much null um and it is likely to change a lot definitely down the line and very soon and I worked really hard on the music, like I said, so I'll be featuring the soundtrack snippets later on down the line because I want to preserve their integrity for now. And I, only, I have a lot of music to make. I only have about eight tracks and I'm a big music and sound person, so I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to like the soundtrack and the sound effects in this game. Also, unfortunately, like I said, I have not been able to add battles yet to show you, but I will try to showcase something close to it in either devlog one or two. I need to fix my bonked weapons files. Don't know what happened to them. I don't know where it went or how it got corrupted. So yeah, I gotta fix that first. But thank you so much for watching and sticking around. Thank you for, like I said, my backers. And this was Dose of Darkness, devlog number zero. I look forward to presenting my progress in the uh, devlog number one. But uh, yeah, very excited about this project. Can't believe it's finally starting to, like the building bricks and blocks are coming together so I'm very very excited and I am very proud of this project even though it's barely started but I think we can turn this into something really great and if we get enough funding um, I don't have a lot of faith that it will be super backed but if we get enough funding I would like to hire someone to help me with the coding side um, someone who's very experienced in RPG Maker because I can produce all the art assets. I just need someone with a little bit more experience ahead of me and um, knowledge that I don't have because I want to do big things with this game. Like I'm being very ambitious with it like I am with all my other projects, but I'm being very ambitious. So I hope you guys liked it. I hope you liked what you saw. I hope something excited you. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. If it's not spoiler related, I will be happy to answer them. And yeah, like I said, I am the Silent Sheepdog and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.